Welcome to That's a Winner podcast. I am Ryan Jenkins. With me, as always, is Josh Brown. And tonight, we also have Kyle Peach with us live uh, on YouTube, on Twitter, and uh, on uh, where else? Where else? We Facebook as well. I do believe we're live. I'm going to also try and record this and air this um, for our normal podcast for this week as well. Well, guys, uh, the breaking news is about uh, last night at about uh, 12, I think, midnight uh, Eastern time where we're all located. Oh, Kyle's in Central Time, but we're uh, Eastern Time. But located then, uh, Albert Pujol signed with the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, I wanted to go live last night, uh, but I just didn't pull the trigger. But then I stayed up until um, 2 a.m. just scouring Twitter and watching everything. So I wish we we just would have gone live last night. But uh, let's open it up, go straight to it. Josh, I asked you yesterday or last week on the podcast – in 2022 than they're in 2021 does this change any of that it does not but you know what it makes them a lot more interesting doesn't it or at least from our perspective the fans who love albert um look, look let's be honest here we don't have to give you know john mozalak and, and bill dewitt it's not like they made some incredible move to make the team dramatically better with this but they made the right move and it's a move you and i talked about last week i said this has got to be coming i'm surprised it hasn't already it's going to put butts in the seat People love Albert. And look, we're all sitting here. We know that it's that the, the reason they made this move is for that reason, right? It's not going to keep us from going to the games. We're going to want to go. The fans love Albert. So, hey, I'm happy with it. I, I don't mind 21 home runs away from 700. Why not? Well, so, Kyle, going on on that tidbit. So, do you think that they improve? And is this because of nostalgia or is it because it actually improves the Cardinals? Well, first of all, I got to tell you, I'm on the podcast tonight because I thought we were going to talk about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Uh, (laughs) That happened last night, too, but I guess I'll leave. Uh, No, I I mean, I think the nostalgia is is certainly there. Uh, Ryan, you and I have gone to opening day for for a lot of number of years together. And and I told you that uh, when Molina, Wainwright and now Pujols are all announced uh, riding around in those Ford trucks, uh, coming into Bush Stadium on opening day for the final time, uh, I, I'm liable to be crying. I hope somebody else is going to be joining me because that is going to be quite the emotional scene at Bush Stadium uh, on opening day, seeing all three of those guys parade around one final time. And, you know, I agree with Josh. It's a it's a sentimental move. It is also a classic Cardinal move, if you really think about it, uh, bringing in a veteran uh, late stages of his career for dirt cheap, trying to uh, put butts in seats. And, and again, with Pujols, it's it's the maximum Cardinal move uh, because, you, you know, the two and a half million dollars they're spending here, they're going to make that in jersey sales alone. Uh, I think all of the guys that uh, burnt Pujols jerseys uh, 10 years ago, probably going to buy some new ones now. And uh, what, a, what a special moment. And, uh, you know, does it make the Cardinals better? Yeah, probably not. But will it put more butts in the seats and sell more merch? Absolutely. Well, I think that's a big part of it is if – is it about that, butts in the seats? Because it obviously makes perfect business sense. Josh shared with me a tweet today of if, uh, if they need 834 more fans to attend every single game, then they they break even on their investment of $2.5 million. Well, yes. <laughs> Will they get 834 more people in the stands every single game? Yeah, I think so. Um, the opening day tickets were higher than we've ever had, You know, as you said, 15-plus years probably going to opening day in a row. And they're the highest they've ever been. And they doubled today. And they were already the highest that I've, that we've ever experienced before. So uh, is it I, – I hope it's more about the move because they're not too excited about um, the young guys that aren't performing as well as they hoped. Uh, Yepes and Gorman and, and those guys uh, looks like that they're not performing how they wanted. So they had this reunion lined up in the event of. And here we are now. I can't wait for opening day and, you know, in a week and a half now away. And uh, Randy Carricker on uh, 101 ESPN this morning cried on air um, talking about what was, you know, what had happened and pools coming back. And I am not going to go that far, but I'm very excited uh, about it. And I wasn't sure 10 years ago if I would ever get that excited about it ever again. Um, so that's pretty exciting. 
Oh, yeah, and don't don't hide it, right? You were tearing up today when you you sent me the clip of spring training when he walked out on the field. I'm sure every fan there was tearing up. You can't watch that and not tear up, right? I mean, you can't you can't not be romantic about baseball, right? And I think for me, watching that clip and it hit me today. So I've told you, Ryan. You know, my my daughter, my 11 year old's really gotten into baseball and softball these last few years. She she went to four or five games with me last year, and um, I've told her about Albert before before. She knows who he is, but. She didn't get to see him, right? She wasn't she wasn't alive in that time where he was with the Cardinals. And so for me now, you know, I'm taking her to – we're already going to three games this year. So I got even a little bit emotional thinking like, hey, like she gets to see this now. She gets to see him in the Cardinals uniform and I can reminisce and tell her about, you know, the big home runs and the games that I saw with him. So you're going to have generations of fans doing this. I mean, it's a great move. Uh, for that matter alone. And, and yeah, the 800 plus, look, they're going to make that two and a half million back, probably the first home stand, right? I saw something about ticket sales doubling already. I mean, it's, it, it's a calculated move, right? But it's the right one. And I think, um, you know, I said it last podcast too, right, Ryan, with Yachty back in camp, it, it, it's not going to surprise me if this happens even quicker with him saying, hey, why, why isn't this done yet? You know, I think, too, uh, to add to that, you know, we also aren't giving credit enough for Albert Pujols, even late stage Albert Pujols being Albert Pujols. The guy's going to hit some home runs. He's going to reach base. He's going to produce. And so some of that productivity is going to go beyond nostalgia and and jersey and ticket sales. I I think he will produce in the DH. And Ryan, as you and I talked about briefly earlier today, uh, you know, not only do you get Albert Pujols to contribute and to sell tickets and merchandise, but you get Albert Pujols in the dugout with Yanni Molina and Adam Wainwright with a whole big young, uh, young cast that they're going to be able to teach, instruct, and learn from for the future. So maybe that cardinal way that kind of had ventured away a little bit might be coming back a little bit with the tutelage of these guys uh, in their last year in the dugout. Yeah, so uh, my next question is is based on performance style. So he's 21 home runs away from 700. He's 62 RBI away from second most on the all-time list. Does Albert Pujols go 21 and 62 in his final year with St. Louis Cardinals? That's tough, man. Um, you know, so we, we, we chatted a little bit about this through text. I texted another buddy of mine. We were talking some about this today. I mean, look. Last year, it was a negative war season for him. It wasn't great. But he hit 17 home runs and 275 at-bats. So the pop is clearly still there. He had 50 RBIs and did those 275 at-bats. It's going to be close, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if he'll get to it. I think, I think if, he could, if he could be healthy and we could get him, the question is, is he, is he going to get 300, 350 at-bats? And, you know, if they're platooning him, with Corey Dickerson, I, I think it's going to be tight on getting to that number. Uh, if he's healthy the whole season, though, you know, he should be able to. But I think if you're not platooning them, the, are you putting him in, in a good position to succeed? Because you look at you look at Albert's numbers against right handers last year, and they're, they are not good. They're just not good. Um, he's taken a big step back in that, but he can clearly still rip the ball off a left-handed batter so, or left-handed pitchers. Okay, I'm going to go nostalgic on you, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say Albert is going to be Albert in St. Louis, and that Albert Pujols has a goal, has an objective, has already put the pressure on himself saying, this is it, there's no 23, it's 22 or bust. I think he's going to get to 21. It may be a a September, October kind of race to the chase kind of thing, but I, I think Albert Pujols will get there. I think you look for him to maybe get a little bit more consistently in the lineup as the DH, because remember, he spent a good chunk of last year without a DH option with the Dodgers. The year before that, the season shortened for because of COVID. So the two years, the sample size you have to look at at Albert Pujols in the so-called home run slump, really not what he's going to be at this year. Yeah, platooning, but also remember, he may get some reps at first base to spell Paul Goldschmidt some, who's not getting any younger himself. So, you know, I think he's got some options there, predominantly DH, and hopefully, like you said, I think it will take 300 to 350 at-bats. The health question is probably the biggest of all there. Can he stay healthy? Uh, If he can and, and can produce like we know Albert can, even in his advanced age, I think he gets there. So are we setting our, all ourselves up for just get our rips, our heart ripped out 
I mean, everyone today is so nostalgic. Everyone is so excited about. But what happens if we're halfway through the season? He's hitting under two hundred, and I mean, do we just do? The, does he just retire at that point, or are we? That's not even in our thought process of what's going to happen. If we're talking about getting our hearts ripped out, I think where we get our hearts hearts ripped out, if I'm honest, is the lack of productivity anywhere else in the offseason of anything of substance. And I think this is the move that the Cardinals are saying, hey, fans, look at us. We signed Albert Pujols. He's back. You asked for it. You got it. We have him uh, winning a World Series. Um, hey, did we tell you Albert Pujols was back? Um, and, and I am afraid that's where the heart rip out may come is, is right now what appears to be a lack of effort in the front office to put a team on the field that can actually go win the World Series. Yeah, that I mean, that's my biggest fear, right? I think I think the lowest low of this, the worst case scenario, right, is him having a Matt Carpenter type last two two seasons and the fans turning on him. I don't think that's going to happen with Albert, even if it was that bad, the production was that bad. You're not going to see the fans turn on him, but it's, it's going to put the team in a bind. If you have other hitters that haven't bounced back, you have guys like Paul DeYoung that are still struggling. It's, it's making the rest of the lineup lineup look weaker. Now, obviously best case scenario of this is that we're in September, Albert's three or four home runs away from reaching that mark. And we're, you know, in a, you know, pennant chase and they're, they're at the top of the division with the Brewers and we're chasing into the playoffs. That's when you want to see this happen. I mean, that would be glorious. You talk about the magic being fully back. That would be absolutely incredible. But again, it all, it all goes back to how do we really think they're going to use him? A buddy of mine said to me, you know, do you really think he's not going to play even against right-handed pitchers? And he made a good point. It's like, I told Ron today, like, what if, you know, what if he plays, what if he plays every home game? no matter the pitcher, right or left-handed. I mean, the fans are going to be coming, and a lot of them, to see him, right? So it wouldn't surprise me if they do that. I don't know if that would be the best decision. I don't know if that's setting Albert up for success. But, I mean, hey, Ryan, you're going to opening day. Do you expect him to be DHing in the lineup, whether it's a right-hander on the mound or not? That was my that was my next question. Do we, is he in the lineup 100% on opening day? I think so. I don't, understand. I don't, see, I don't see how he, he's not – on the opening day lineup as a DH. I don't see it. I, I, If you go this far, you make this signing, and you plan to platoon him, whether it's Quintana pitching on opening day, which is a, the lefty, or a couple of the other options, the couple other options are still pirate hitter, uh, pitchers. So I'd, I'd rather have Albert Pujols and the nostalgia for that one day. I always tell everyone, they ask me about opening day, for people that have never gone, what it's like in St. Louis, and, and there's nothing – like it i've been to cincinnati i've been to other places during and it's, there's nothing like it but and they always ask who won and i was like i it doesn't matter to me i don't mm -hmm. know i can't i can't go back and tell you if the cardinals won or lost i can tell you it usually rains but i can't tell you if if they won or lost because it's all about the pomp and circumstance of the day you know it's the gates open even earlier than normal you know the, the clydesdales around the track the the guys on the on the ford pickup trucks right it's it's the whole day and so if we're going to celebrate St. Louis, we're going to celebrate Albert Pujols and Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina, then yes, Albert Pujols should be in the starting lineup. It's it's the culmination of that day. Now, if they don't start on the next day, then and that's fine. But I think it's more about that day he should start. If hey, I'm going that Saturday. Don't say that. I, I want to see him Saturday. <laughs> if he well, doesn't start, that day. if he doesn't start, he should get at least an at bat, right? I mean, he's got to come oh, to yeah. the plate. He's got to be in the game at some point. The only thing that concerns me about a start is the late start to a late started spring training. That's the only yeah. thing that I think worries me. You don't want to trot him out on opening day, ready to go out, swing for the fence and pull a muscle because he's not all the way stretched out through like he normally would be in a normal spring. But yeah, you, he's. I, I don't care if he takes the pitcher out. He walks out like they did. The players did to take Mariano Rivera out those years back. I mean, he's got to be on the field for something more than a truck ride. I think at some point, put him at first base and let him coach. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you talked about that part of it. He he uh, said today in his presser that uh, Yachty was texting him at six a.m. yesterday or the day before, like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He goes, "Hey, I'm." I'm getting ready to get up and go work out. He's he looks pretty slim and trim. I think he's been working out, and I think I'm not worried about that part. Now, you know what I'm also not worried about? I'm not worried about Albert Pujols striking out with runners at second and third, which I can't <laughs> say for a lot of guys on the lineup at, at times. 
And I know that Albert Pujols, even if he's not in his prime and he's not where he once was or what he was 10 years ago as a St. Louis Cardinal, I feel strongly like I do with, with Yadier Molina at the plate. He's going to have a tough at bat with, and one, with two outs and two strikes. And more than likely, he's going to get the runner in. And so the original question, do, are we any better? I think that he adds value to the team for those reasons, but also even more than that because of everything else. We're talking about the intangibles of him now being in the dugout, in the clubhouse, every single day and every single game with guys like Tyler O'Neill who want to be the next superstar in this league. You know, with guys, Nolan Arenado, who says he is my favorite player. With those guys, with the younger guys that are even coming up, with Nolan Gorman, like this is just outstanding for them. Even if Adios, he does too, yeah, absolutely. Even if he does nothing, to be honest, they still will improve greatly individually because of his brain in the dugout. You know, I don't want to call for Ali Marmol's head already. I, I, I do that early enough as it is uh, to our managers of, of years gone by. I'm not doing that, but I'm just hypothetically setting something up for you here. So if we're not making the investment to really say we're going to be a, a World Series contender and you've got arguably the best first baseman to ever play in a Cardinals uniform, one of the best pitchers to ever pitch for the Cardinals all time, one of the best hitters, uh, and certainly the best catcher to ever catch for the Cardinals, all going out at the same time. Are we going to see a mass coaching change at the end of year? Maybe we're, we're maybe we're not. This is really stretched, so bear with me. Maybe we're <laughs> not wanting to win, so we have a reason to get rid of all of those guys. Put Wainwright as your pitching coach, Yachty as your manager, and Pujols as your hitting coach, and, and here you go for for years to come. Boy, no that would be sure, Ollie, No pressure. So Ollie's a scapegoat, huh? <laughs> I, 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 sorry to say that. Well, I, I think here tonight. I don't think they. I think one of the reasons why they got rid of Mike Schilt is because he wasn't willing to platoon and make these types of moves. According to reports, Katie Wu, one of them, that Ali Marmol was one of the main people pushing to sign Albert Pujols, and I think that is because of the platooning and the in the matchups that they want to play that Mike Schilt was just not willing to to do, like Gabe Kapler's doing in San Francisco, like the Tampa Bay Rays have been doing for years. He wasn't willing to do that. He's a you know, a, a baseball purist and loves the game, but that's not how the game he wants to play. I think that's one of the yeah. reasons why he's gone. And that's one of the reasons why Albert Pujols is now a St. Louis Cardinal again. Yeah. And let's, let me break down here for you how Albert can be effective this year. Right. We talked about the splits. Look in 2021, his slash line against left-handed pitchers, he hit 294, 336 uh, on base percentage. He slugged 603 against lefties last year at, what, 41 years old. So clearly he's still got it against him. Now, the flip side, like I said, is against right-handed pitching. 180 average, 233 on base, and just a 266 slugging. So, But the other big guy they signed that's making double that Albert's making is Corey Dickerson. Well, what are his numbers against right-handed pitchers last year? He hit 277, 330 on base percentage, 419 slugging, which isn't isn't off the charts, but it's okay. Now, part of Dickerson's last year, I think he was injured half the season. His career numbers slugging-wise against uh, right-handed pitchers are, are a lot better than that. So, I mean, I think you've got your DHs there. And obviously, you know, we're supposed to talk to Kyle Reese at some point, hopefully this week, about the prospects. The biggest person this affects, I think, is Juan Yepes. I think it's a pretty surefire bet that he's going to start the season at AAA Memphis. Nolan Gorman as well. I think both those guys are going to have him start there. Get there I went that bat, by the way, you said that Gorman would be on the roster opening day, and I and I told you that wouldn't happen. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I think I think um, there just wasn't enough time. I don't think there was enough time for those guys to make you know a big a big think, noise. I don't think there was ever a plan to have Nolan Gorman on the opening no. day roster. Yeah, unless unless it was really something where they were not sold on to Young, but they're clearly they're clearly wanting to give him that shot to bounce back at shortstop. So he's going to get a long leash with that. There's any other big injuries? I think you could see Gorman up or Yepes. Um, you know, if one of the other guys get hurt. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like this rounds out the bench, right? I mean, those four bench spots are going to be Albert, uh, Sosa, Kisner, and Lars Newtbar. Is that right? Is that what we're thinking? Not counting Corey Dickerson as DH, you could you count him and or Albert as DH. But the four bench is going to be a variety of those guys. It's looking like so a little. That's the only thing for me. It's a little, little right-handed heavy. Obviously, you have to have Kisner and you have to have Sosa. Those two are going to be there. Kisner's the backup catcher, but it makes the bench pretty right-handed heavy. Is the only bad thing. 
Now, I don't do math well. I'm a broadcast major by default, so we don't math. But so the, there's two extra roster spots right in the month of April with the new rule changes. So that takes your four. So that count, accounts for all the four you just mentioned. Get us to the 28 expanded rosters. Yes, I think it does. And, and that's coming off of reports that the Cardinals are likely going to bring two extra pitchers. Use sure. those yeah, two extra spots for right. right. So yeah, it, they, yeah, yeah, fifteen look, good pitchers is what the yeah. So fifteen they, pitchers, thirteen fielders. So don't ever get me involved years. with a math question again. I'll I'll never well, respond. I'm not the best math guy either, so don't feel bad. There, there you go. Well, um, there's only a couple things I had left on it, but so I saw the stat before we came on that if you combine Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt's career numbers. They are almost identical to Albert Pujols' entire career. <laughs> I'm talking all like batting average, hits, RBI, home runs, OPS, career. Those two together is Albert Pujols. I don't think that people – look, Albert Pujols has been gone for 10 years. The, the game has changed in St. Louis a lot in those 10 years. A lot of mediocrity, I would say, the not caring to try and win as much uh, based on that time. But the 10 years that Albert Pujols put in in St. Louis was 10 – of the best years in the history of baseball for one individual player. And his worst year, I think was 09. He hit 321 with like 30 or oh, 29 home runs or something like that. His worst year. So if we get even this much of a player that Albert Pujols was for those 10 years, then the Cardinals will be better off. And uh, you know, whenever he left, I was, I called him number five. I was over it. Not, not uh, I was heartbroken. Like many people, but now it all the feels come back of of all the big hits and you know going to Cincinnati and seeing him crush off uh, Dave Merriweather Merriweather there and all the big hits and walk offs in St. Louis I'm 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 back in but I'm also so disappointed that the St. Louis Cardinals haven't contributed to this this last ride this one last dance for now these three guys just think of a, a Carlos Correa on a one year deal or Trevor Story in this lineup. Now with a classy, good hitting Albert Pujols against lefties, there's that's a real contender, I I think. Now, so my next question will be based on this. So you can answer, you can talk about those parts. But if the Cardinals are close near the trade deadline, Paul got to do something. Is Sosa's not doing what they, you know, they're not getting there like everyone expects them not to, right? Do the Cardinals do anything to upgrade this lineup dramatically? if it feels like we're really close to making a run. You have to. You have to, right? I mean, with I'm these not, guys. I, I understand we have to. Will the St. Louis Cardinals do anything? It, it, unless it's some savvy, crazy trade. Maybe maybe Cleveland is going to get rid of Jose Ramirez and give us $50 million. If that <laughs> happens, that would be great, right? Well, you know, the, the Dodgers got Albert Pujols by agreeing to take him, and the, and the Angels – paid 30 million. So that's the kind of deal I think you're going to get. I don't think, uh, to your point, this is not an ownership group, period, that goes out and and makes what in their mind is a rash, quick decision to try to do something. If there's something there that they think they can spend a little bit, give up a little bit, and, and not have to invest a whole lot of money, that's the deal they'll find at the trade deadline. But, you know, they're, they're not going to go get the off-season's Trevor Story uh, that's just not going to happen. You don't have to turn your camera off because I disagreed with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. My <laughs> we lost Ryan. We'll keep on talking. No, yeah, I think if they do make a big move, I still think it should happen right now. But I think if if, if there's one that, that does closer to the deadline, it would be for pitching. Um, look, I mean, the front office, the ownership has showed they're, they're more than willing to play the waiting game. They did it for two years with Nolan Arenado, right? I mean, we heard that talks had started up as early as 2019, and they dropped. It was just way out of what they were going to give up, and it fell into their lap. So I think that's maybe where Oakland is. For example, with a couple of their young pitchers, they might be asking for a little bit too much from people right now, and they're not willing to give it. Um, you know, maybe the Cardinals are a little more willing to give that if, if we look up May 5th and Jack's still not back and the rotation is struggling. I think that's where you might see a, a savvy move be made, hopefully for, you know, a, a number two or number one possibly type starter. I think the pitcher is the pitcher is the – pitching is the worst part that we have at the moment. Yeah. But also – we need to compete with the big boppers 
as well in in this division. You, I mean, in this uh, not the division. There's nothing in the division in this league. <laughs> you, you know, we're gonna try. We're gonna. We should, as the St. Louis Cardinals, should be one or two in the division and should be pushing towards number one. Obviously, the Brewers have a very good pitching staff, but we have to have the hitters to do so. So. The biggest link, the biggest weakness is still the weakest link of the shortstop. And that's where it's going to be. So you don't think that they do anything shortstop wise at any time this season, even if the Cardinals are tearing it up and they see the opportunity to upgrade that one spot to be able to make an actual pennant run. I mean, think about that. Wainwright, Yachty, Pujols, pennant run to end their career. Yeah, I well, I told so th- in this scenario, you're saying like De Young is still just just been awful. He's not yeah. cutting it. So so that, uh, the bat's last not year. playing, or he's just saying yeah, that. Same yeah. Last year. Well, well, and even last year, I mean, Sosa kind of bailed him out because he he hit above what he normally was doing in his yes. career statistics in the minors. So look, I've told you, I think if this happens, you're not going to see a trade for a big shortstop. I think what you're going to see happen if they're really starving for more offense at that position. You're going to see Tommy move to shortstop and Nolan Gorman called up to second base. I think if he, if he, if no one's tearing it up still in AAA, if he's still showing he didn't, you know, have much left there, uh, which I mean, Juan Yepes is a guy at this point that's really kind of showed he doesn't have much left to AAA. So he'll be waiting in the wings as well and might be somebody. I, I think you're going to see him call up one of those guys and give one of the young guys a shot before you see a big trade like that. That's just where I'm at. We just haven't seen him do it. Since what, Matt Holiday? I mean, is that yeah. probably the last big deadline trade, honestly, that we made for a big hitter? Yeah, you know, there was a there was a stretch there where they where they were bringing in some big names. Uh, Will Clark uh, was, was one of those. Were those all Walt, were those all Walt Jockety moves though? Mm, I think you may be right. Yeah, I think they were. Okay. So yeah, Holiday is is really the last the last one, and, and I and I agree. I don't think you're going to see. The type of move you're talking about, I, I think at that point it's uh, internal or bust. And um, unfortunately, I think that's – or maybe we'll find a, a, an emerging star that we, we hope we find. Maybe Paul DeYoung will hit 300 for once in a decade. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I, hope, I hope that's the case. With the Albert Pujols news, you know, what, what it did was it sent a lot of optimism to the fan base. And, and so, you know what, with all the problems, with, with all the pitching – injuries and problems that 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 I think is a serious problem we're going to have to address uh, but let's be optimistic let's let's say we're going to get things done this year and, and I think that's what this move does is at least does send a shot of optimism into the fan base yeah I think um it does give all of those things that you said I think there's a lot of false hope built into it I think that we're really setting ourselves up to think that this could be great now look I, i'm on the fence on both sides that i feel like this could be the catalyst and you get all those those crazy fans in one place for those three guys and it boosts the entire team right and i can really see that because i think that harrison bader and tyler o'neill and those guys they can they can use that energy and turn it in, in, into even more than they've ever than they've had before and i and i think that's a possibility but then on the other side i'm thinking this could just be uh, just a, a mirage that the DeWitts are just putting over us to try and hope uh, to forget about that they didn't do anything this offseason. I saw our grade for the offseason, according to some of the, the rankings out there, that they gave us a D because we didn't do anything. It's fair. Right. Very it's fair. fair. So then why are we so excited? Why, you know, I told you on the last podcast because we I'm love excited. Albert. It's Albert freaking Pujols. That's it's why we're so excited. Pujols. It's not Albert Pujols of 2011. 2010, no. 2013, 2014, 2015. It's our pool. That's what I do. What will we get out of it? Gosh, I'm hoping there is so much that comes out of it and so much excitement for this year, but I'm also reserved and holding back just a little bit of, I, I might get a gut punch and hurt myself even more. I might be crying for different reasons, not because Albert pools is riding around on a Ford truck in Bush stadium. Guess what <laughs> happened last time in October? Albert Pujols wore a Cardinal uniform. Yeah, there you go. It, it, trends. It's all about trends and cybermetric data. There's my cybermetric data for you tonight. I don't know that. I don't know that's any cybermetric data, but that's just factual of what happened in 2011. Yes, and um, <laughs> he's he's 42 years old. But you know, last night 
I'll I'll end with this and let you guys have any of your ends because we're at 30 minutes. I know you guys want to be done in 30. So um, last night news broke, and all I thought about was that my 16 month old son will get to watch Albert Pujols play in a Cardinals uniform, which when I was in my 20s, that's when I got to watch Albert Pujols and make all those memories. To think that now 10 years later that my son gets to do that for you know just this one year. Is just crazy to me that I never thought that'd be that that would ever happen in a real role. And I feel like that Albert is not going to just be a, I feel like they're going to really look at him as an every day or, you know, every option against a left-handed hit uh, bet pitcher every single day, which I never thought we'd see again in St. Louis. So I'll end with a positive note. The nostalgia is exciting in a week and a half from today, then we will be there as early as I possibly can get there and show my son again. We went last year in a weird year, but go again, around for everything and let all that wash over me again and just let it be good for one one day at least. Yeah, that's exactly I mean that's exactly where I'm at. I, I, I mean at this point all we can do is is be hopeful for it, right? And and just like you said, Kyle, hope, hopefully the magic's back. I mean, I want to I want to read this quote real quick from Ollie today. He got asked about Albert, and he said, "Oh, he's he's got something left. He's got more than something left." Albert Albert wants to play this year because he can help a team win. He wants to finish well, and I believe he will do that. So, look, yeah, I, I think what you said is right, Ryan. I mean, they they're looking at this. I think is an almost everyday type role for him. They're going to give him every opportunity to do that, uh, even probably early on, especially starting the season at home to be DH, whether it's a righty on the mound or not. So I'm going to be rooting for him, man, right? Like we don't root against these guys. I mean, we've knocked Paul DeYoung, but he's going to be starting shortstop. At the end of the day, yeah, I want him to succeed. I hope he I hope he proves us all wrong and has a fantastic season. I mean, that, that only means we're maybe deeper in the playoffs, you know, come October, and that's what we want, man. That's what we want for these three guys in their last season. And, man, I hope they get it. If Albert Pujols is hitting 21 home runs on the season and you can get any contribution from Paul DeYoung in the 20 range, that's a completely different lineup. It really is. For sure, and, yeah. And, and they know that Paul DeYoung has that in him. They know that it's in there. We, we've seen it. And we know that Albert Pujols had that, has that in, in, in him as well. We know that's going to be his goal. We know 21 and 62 is going to be his goal. And if we can get those contributions from him and from Paul DeYoung, then the team does really have a chance as long as the pitching holds up. Kyle, I'll leave yeah. it with you with, with anything else you got. All right, so so just to kind of piggyback off of hitting real quick and moves, maybe the move we make if Paul DeYoung continues to struggle, this could be a move that they make is find a new hitting instructor. Maybe <laughs> he needs fresh eyes to look at that swing. Maybe fresh eyes need to happen at the whole lineup a little bit off of last year's offense that hasn't happened in the offseason. I'll leave that for another day. I'll close with this. I'm the old guy in the room, right? So uh, you have to go back in my lifetime to the 1980s, the Willie McGee, Ozzie Smith, uh, Vince Coleman trio of players. This is a trio of players of a generation of Cardinal fans. Albert Pujols, Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina going out together, swan song, one final trip around the sun with those guys in the lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals. What a year it's going to be. Let's hope that it becomes finally 2022 is the next 2011. I couldn't have said it better myself, and I've never been to Cooperstown. But 2027, let's set a date because we'll be seeing. Can we, yes. get, can we buy tickets now? Yeah, let's we get, get, let's I've go never, get those I've now. never been. I never wanted to go. But 2027 sounds like a good year to make the first trip. Yeah, we got to start planning that trip now and book the hotels. <laughs> All right. Well, Come thanks in. for watching. That's the Winter Podcast. I'm Ryan Jenkins, Josh Brown, Kyle Peach. Uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, we'll, we'll get this up uh, on our normal podcast spot. We're also going to talk to Kyle Reese about the, the future of the St. Louis Cardinals as well. But we had to do a breaking news emergency podcast for all the nostalgia. So thanks. Check you out soon. Thanks. Bye.